Gina. Today I want to show you some of the new things that I have on my website. I bought a whole bunch of pendants and as I take photographs of them and list them, it, they just don't do them justice. So I thought I would show them on video and also give you a few ideas for Christmas gifts that are affordable and quick to make. And you can do a lot of them, get your Christmas gifts done fairly quickly. So I just wanted to show you the stuff that I bought. And first, I want to show you some of the gold tone pendants that I bought. This would also, most of these components would work as earrings also because they're small. And then I want to show you how to pop some of them on beading chain or ear wires and make a really cute little gift. Now, first, I wanted to show you this little star here. This is Micro Pave CZs in um, 18 karat gold plated metal. So this is 18 karat gold plated. As I said, it has really pretty little cubic zirconia pave settings in it. It's really pretty. And I hope it's doing it justice on the video because it just doesn't photograph well, but it's just an adorable little piece. And of course, it's only one-sided because it is a pendant, but this would be perfect to put on ear wires. So what I would do is this little end here, it's just folded over. You could just unfold it, take the bail off, and slide a ear wire into the um, loop here on top and have a really pretty set of earrings. Or you could have three of them and have a pendant and earring set. So that's really pretty. And I'll show you how to put that on a piece of beading wire and see what it looks like. So that's gorgeous. And then I have these other two pieces. This little cross is also micro pave set around the middle. It's, a, it's 16 karat gold plated and it has some larger CZs on the outside of it here. And then this one is 18 karat gold plated with some micro pave in the center. And of course, again, they are one sided because they're pendants, but they would still, either one would make a nice set of earrings or just a plain pendant. You would just slide a jump ring in this one for earrings because it's sideways, it's vertical, the loop. So you would put a jump ring in it and then when you put your ear wire on it would hang correctly. You would also, you could just slide this on a chain because of the way it's positioned. You don't need to put a jump ring on this one. And this one, you could do the same thing. You could take off the bail and you could just um, put ear wires on here or leave the bail on, slide it on a chain. It would work really well. And then I have these little guys. They are alloy gold tone micro pave set CZs. And they're adorable little Christmas trees. And this would make a perfect set. I'm selling all three of these for $5. And these are $5.50 each. So they are very affordable. So this set, you could just put these directly on the ear wires because the loop is in the correct position. This one, you'd have to drop a jump ring through and then put it on a chain. But this would make a really cute set, just adorable. So you'll get three of those if you order those. And then I wanted to show you with beading chain. Now, beading chain, I do have some on my website, not a lot. Shirley at budgetbeads.shop has more. And she also has some really nice crimp ends to finish this off that are 18 karat gold plated and they work beautifully and finish off your set. Really professional looking, they're just gorgeous. And that's what this looks like and I'm going to show you how to use that real quick. And I've cut 18 inches of the gold tone brass beading chain. This is 0.6 millimeter and um, like I said, I have a little. Shirley has a lot more. And right now I'm out of gold completely, so um, you may want to check her out and get these endings and some bead chain if you'd like. And this is what we're going to do. I've cut 18 inches of chain because I just want a little um, necklace that just lays right at my collarbones, right at the... Um, 
base for the throat. And what I'm going to do is these are hooked together, so I'm just going to open this lobster claw and open it up. And what I have now is two separate endings here. And I have a crimp tube at the end of this with an extender on it. I'm going to bring you close. So what I do is I pick up my crimping tool. In this second divot, the one closest to the handle, I will place the crimp tube in. And you can see as I'm holding it, they're kind of curved. This side is more flat. And this is the side that I like to look at when I do this because I want to place just the end of the crimp tube in the plier or the crimp tool. So I'm putting the crimp tube right inside that second divot, the one closest to the handle, and I'm making sure that it's it's flush or a little bit recessed into the actual tool. And then I'm just going to turn my hand here and drop everything. I was holding it funny. So let me turn this. And place it back in there. So now it's back in there, a little recessed. And then I'm going to pick up my beading chain. I'm going to place this into the crimp tube, making sure I can feel the chain hit the top of the crimp tube. And then I'm just going to squeeze. And now you can see at the very end of this crimp tube, I have a nice little V fold. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to place the two tubes that I've created with this, with the crimp tool on either side sideways in the crimp tool. So let me show you. You can see that I have placed it and I'm making sure it's flush. I have placed it in the first divot on the crimping tool, making sure that the crimp tube is flush and it's not sticking out because I only want to crimp the end and now I'm going to squeeze again. The two tubes I created are touching the crimping tool so that they push together, fold over the fold we created and make a really nice crimp like this. So this is a really nice finish to this beading chain. And now I'm just going to grab my pendant and I'm just going to slide it on here. And I'm going to grab this one and make another end. And you can do this for all of the pendants I'm going to show you. You can do it in platinum tone, silver tone, gold tone, rose gold tone. I don't think I have any rose gold pendants. Maybe I do. I don't know. We're going to find out. Now, you can just place that back in there. Let me get you close one more time. It's positioned in the second divot closest to the handle on the crimping tool. Then I'm going to, and it's flush or even a slightly recessed, then I'm going to place the chain inside the crimping tube and make sure I feel it touch the top of the crimp tube and squeeze. And then you can see the fold. We're going to place it into the crimping tool again making sure that the two tubes are touching the sides of the crimping tool. In the first divot, the one closest to the tip of the crimping tool, and squeeze. And now we have a really nice, perfect finish for our beading chain. And this is what I have. I have a pretty little minimalist type of necklace that the young girls love, older women love. It's just classic, pretty little piece, just like that. And then you can also do, of course, you can just slide some of these on ear wires. So I'm just going to grab my chain nose and my flat nose pliers here, and I'm just going to open an ear wire and I'm just twisting it open from side to side. Let me show you what I've done. And I'll do another one so you can see since I was zoomed out. Then I'm going to place this on my ear wire, making sure that the crystal part is towards the front of the ear wire. And then I'm just going to close it. I'll close that a little better. So all I'm doing is just twisting it back and pushing it towards 
this half of the loop. So let me show you again. Grab your ear wire. See where it's open. You can move your little ball if it has one on it. See where it's open and just twist it. Don't pull it out, just twist it open like this. This is what you should have. Grab another of your pendants and pop it on here. Close it the same way you twisted it open. Close it just like that. And now I have a really cute set of earrings. And again, you can do the same thing with this one. You could pop it on some beading wire. Or it's just some regular chain too. It doesn't have to be beading chain. It could just be a regular small chain. And I'll show you that in a minute here too. So I'm just popping this. I just twisted it open just like I showed you to twist to open the ear wires. And then I'm just going to twist the jump ring closed the same way I opened it. Okay. Something is on my... Yep. Yeah. I had a little bit of a head pin on there. Let's do that again. Actually, it's closed. So, just pop a little jump ring on there. And now you can put this on a piece of chain and you have a nice little set. Just really quick, really fast, really cute. So let me get a few more things and show you a few more okay. ideas. So moving on, let's look at some platinum tone pendants here. This is also a micro pave. It's set in polymer clay, little crystals, and it does not photograph well whatsoever, but it is just so sparkly and pretty. It's just such a gorgeous little piece. I put it on my website. I took a picture of it. It just does not look good. I'm hoping it translates a little bit better on the video here. You see what it looks like. And what I have done is I have some of this chain and I will also list it by the beading chain. So if you come to my site, um, you will find this chain under the beading chain page or on the beading chain page. It's just a small little chain here and I'm just going to put it through the pendant here. I have prepared one end by putting a small jump ring through with a lobster claw clasp. This is kind of a big lobster claw clasp but I like them because I can navigate them better with my fingernails if they're a little bit bigger. So this is what this end looks like and let's do the other end. So I'm using a very small jump ring. I'm just using like a three millimeter jump ring and then I have a bigger jump ring too to use to clasp on with my lobster claw clasp. So I'm just going to make sure that this bigger jump ring is closed nice and tightly. I'm using 18 gauge stainless steel jump rings so that they stay really nice. Make sure that's closed tightly. I will open this smaller jump ring. So my opening of my jump ring is here. I'm just going to place my pliers on either side, twist it open like that. Then I'm going to grab this bigger jump ring. I'm going to put the small jump ring on the last link of the chain and I'm going to close it. Most everyone knows how to do this, but just to make sure it is a beginner's channel. So then I just twist that little jump ring back the way that I opened it and close it just like that. And voila, that fast, I have a really pretty necklace. And I, I will wear, wear this. I will keep this one for me. And these are just really pretty. It has a great sparkle. I wish you could actually see it in person. It's so much prettier. But that's that. Then I have these little charms. Um, just little solitaire CZ charms. And they're platinum tone. And they are just so pretty. Look at the way they sparkle. Let me put a couple in my hand here so you can see them. They're just really pretty. They're small, but they're not so small that you can't see them. 
Oh, with one of them, I've put on a small jump ring. I just opened it up and slipped it on. I will do that with the rest of them too, because what I think I want to do is slide them on some beading chain with a crystal in between. Now I could do a stop with a crimp to uh, with a crimp bead also, and I may do that. But let me see first what I have here. So I went ahead and prepared one end of the beading chain, just like I showed you in the gold. And this is the silver tone. And um, this is available on Shirley's website, of course. It, she has them in gold, silver, and rose gold. And what I'm going to do, I think, is just string some of these on here and have a little front with little dangles. So these come five to a package on my website. I think they're five dollars. I don't remember. I will look, but or you can look. It, they're very affordable. You could get a couple of packages and put a bunch of them on here too if you would like, however you want to do it. And I also have these little stars on there and these stars are really cool and they come five to a package too. They're platinum tone and the little rhinestone just sticks out the end there little CZ just sticks right out the end of the star and they're really well done very pretty they're plated very nicely in long lasting plating so they're really nice and you can do the same thing with these these actually have a bail on them these do not but you can use these as a charm or you can use them as a pendant you can take the bail off if you'd like and make a little pair of earrings whatever you'd like the first thing I'm going to do though is I'm going to go ahead and put some more little jump rings on my um, little charms here. So I'm going to find myself, I have a mixture of sizes, I'm going to find myself some tiny jump rings. So these are like three millimeter jump rings. And the same thing I've been showing you all along, find where it opens, place your pliers on either side of the opening and just twist it open. And then grab one of your charms, put it on that jump ring, get even closer here, grab either side of the jump ring, come here, and close it. Now these jump rings aren't cut very well, so I'm not gonna get a good closure. I'm going to have to, off camera, I'm going to have to trim those a little bit. But this is what you should have. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with the rest of them and come back and show you my necklace. Okay, so I have put jump rings on all five of my charms here. And now for my beading chain, one end, like I said, is prepared. But this end I need to string my beads on with. And I think I'm going to use some 4 millimeter Swarovski bicone crystals with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put out a little bit of glue and this one isn't open. Let me grab another one. This is just jewelry, metal glue. Um, you can use E6000, you can use um, Hypo Cement, you can use whatever you have on hand. Super glue works great, especially if you have some with a brush, you can just brush this on. But I just put a little bit of the glue on this piece of paper, plastic actually, it's plastic, and I'm just going to pull my chain through. And this sets up really fast. So I'm just going to leave it there. And I just have a nice little bit of coating on the end here. So that that will harden my chain a little bit. And I can bead a little bit easier with it. Otherwise it's floppy. So I'm going to give that a second to harden and we'll be right Okay, back. so now you can see that I have a nice little stiff end here that I can use basically like a beading needle so that I can pick up my beads a little easier. Otherwise it's just too floppy and it's hard to pick up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to thread on. Now I could find the center and put a little crimp bead on here to make sure that everything stays in place and I may do that. Let's see what this looks like first if we need to do that or not. So I have a video called Beading Chain 101 and it will show you all kinds of different methods to make your necklace. You could make this a floating necklace with little crimp beads on either side of the um, crystals so you could put them all the way up and down the chain and then put these in the center. There's lots of things that you can do. So I've just put one on 
and then I'm going to string on one of my charms and I'm sorry these little things are hard for me to handle this finger doesn't function well so um, and actually I'm getting a lot of comments about that lately I'm sorry that my finger sticks up and some people are telling me it's annoying but it was bit off by a dog and reattached so it does not function well it's shorter than my other fingers and it does not bend in the first joint so I have issues with it so I'm sorry if my finger sticking up bothers you but um, it's just the way I learned to adapt to use my hands without it so anyway, let's get back to this. So we've put on this bicone crystal, then we've put on this um, charm and put it on through the jump ring. Let me see my jump ring's all messed up. And then I'm gonna put on another bicone crystal and then another of my charms. And I'm just going to do that until I have all five of my charms on and my beads on. And these little four millimeters don't seem to want to go on here. I may have to go with a six millimeter. Sometimes it's the way the chain is cut and sometimes it's just the hole in the bead. So I'm gonna find some that fit well. And I'm just going to continue stringing those on. So that's what I have so far. I'm going to continue stringing them on until I have all five of them on and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I found some six millimeter Swarovski crystals and put them on. I didn't find my clear ones. These are um, a moonlight or something like that. Um, they're just really light, light purple, I think, kind of a purple glow. And these are just really pretty you can use any color you want it works better the four millimeters just a little too small to struggle getting it on and off the chain plus this works really really nicely now you could go ahead and get two packages of these and make 10 so you have a, a bigger centerpiece so that it is around the front of the throat even longer so i'm going to go ahead and put 10 on and show you what that looks like too and then i just decided that i didn't want my ends ended so I cut a different piece of beading chain and I will put the endings on because I think I want to crimp these into place and show you how to do that too. So I'm going to go ahead and continue. This is what it looks like with five charms and I think I'm going to use actually I think I'll use 10. Let me look and see um, how it looks. Sometimes an odd number looks a little bit better than an even number because you get a dead center one. So let me see what I come up with and I will show you that. So I went ahead and put all 10 on. I just started with a Swarovski, I <laughs> can't talk, a Swarovski crystal on the outside of either side here. So um, I'm using six millimeter. You could use eight millimeter too. That would give even a bigger spread across and a bigger presentation. You could use emerald. You could use ruby red. You could use any color black. It doesn't matter. These, like I said, I think they're called moonlight or something like that. I don't remember. I got them a long time ago and they're just, they were just sitting around. So I decided I would use them on this. So this is what this looks like. And don't worry about the colors. Use whatever colors you want. The rhinestones, of course, are a neutral. So this is really pretty. I could even put another one on and, you know, spread it out even wider if I wanted to, but I think this is good enough. And what I've done is I'm going to bring the ends of my chain together. It's on about an 18 inch chain. And I'm just going to bring them together and center these crystals at the bottom here. And then just lay it down. And I want to stabilize this so it stays somewhat centered in my chain in my on my chain. So you want to just bring the ends together, center it the best you can, and then let me back off a little so you can see. I'm going to grab a size one crimp bead. So it's a round crimp bead and it is a beadalon. So this is what this is, size one round beadalon. And I'm, even though I'm using platinum colored, this silver kind of works for bright or platinum. So I'm just using the silver tone color 
Bilan, of course, size one. I know, I repeated myself, but Bilan works the best. They just hold better. They're stronger. They're just really good crimp beads. So I'm getting two of these out. And then, now that this is centered, I'll just pick up one on my beading chain and the ends of this one aren't stiff, so because I cut a different chain. So if you want to, you can stiffen them up, but you should be able to slide. And I'm just not moving anything. I'm just leaving it where it's at. And then I'm going to grab, let me get you in a little closer, rearrange this, bring you in. I'm going to grab my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to let these crimp beads be a little bit above that last crystal. I don't want this to squish my crystals together. I just want this to be a stopper so that, that my focal stays in the middle of my chain. So now I'm just going to squish that and just make sure it's closed nice and tightly. And then I will do the same thing on the other side. Just leaving like a millimeter or two away from the last crystal and I am squishing that crimp bead. And now my beads will still slide around. They still have movement, but they won't slide off my chain and they will stay somewhat centered. And of course you can arrange it once you get it on your neck, but you just want kind of a stabilization factor here. So that's all this is. And then we can go ahead and finish the ends of the chain with those really nice little ends from Shirley and um, call it good. So since I already showed you that, I'm not going to show you again. I'll go ahead and put a silver tone one on this chain and come back and show you the necklace. Okay, so here's the necklace. And I'm thinking because of the fact that this has such a nice long extender, I would have cut just 16 inches. So this will fit right at the base of the throat. 16 inches without an extender is just a little too tight for me. It makes me feel like I'm being strangled. It's not actually tight, but it just it's just too close. 18 is a little too long. I want this to lay right at the base of the throat so it stretches right right out like that and it has a nice little sparkle. It's absolutely gorgeous on. It's just that I think making it for me, I would cut it shorter. So if you're using these extenders from Shirley and these ends, then you may want to consider that depending upon what size your neck is, of course. If you're a very small person, 16 inches is perfectly fine. It works great without an extender even. If you are a medium sized person, uh, 17, 18 inches right around there. 18 might be a little bit long. And if you're a larger person, you want to go 19 or 20, just depending. But um, this is what this turned out like. Let me get you in close. This is really pretty. And you can see it's stabilized on here. So my focal stays nice in the middle. And it's, that. Ah, just lay it down. It's just really pretty. I, I really like this. I think this turned out great. So anyway, these little charms are available under um, pendants, I believe, on my website, on the pendants page. So anyway, there's that. Let's okay, move on. Okay, so let's move on and look at a few more things that I have. I have these really pretty pendants. They're in several different colors, and some of them are kind of a tri-color or a bi-color effect. See, you can see it's got a nice checkerboard cut, really pretty. It's faceted glass, I believe, and it has the micro pave CZs in the top here. Really nicely plated, very pretty, platinum tone, and these are in several colors. We've got the pink, and then we've got one with kind of a maroon and a teal color, and then an orange and yellowy color. They're all really very pretty. I think that's the same. So these, I think I might try stringing something really tiny, like little four millimeter rhicones all the way around and put one of these in the center. Or of course, just pop it on a piece of chain. You can just slide the chain right through the top there. And those are really, really pretty. And then we've got some others. We have this micro pave with a little dangle moon like this. 
This is just really gorgeous too. Let me get you in just a little closer so you can see these a little better. So that's really pretty. And then I have another one similar to it that is the Micro Pave with a little dangle in the middle that's all the clear crystal there. And then I have these little Micro Pave hearts. These would make really nice earrings. So I may sell those in sets of two and um, that would be really cute for earrings. Then I have sets of four of these little rhinestone hearts. So there'll be a package of four of these. I have those on the website. And then I also have a different style heart that is also a package of four, a little bit smaller and more pave set. So we have these also. And that's a package of four. So you could make a couple sets of earrings and give them away to your friends or your daughters or your daughter's friends or oh, whatever. And um, that's those. These are these. And then I also have these pendants. Now this has a nice big rhinestone in the middle, nice big crystal in the middle, and then multicolor on the outside. Very nicely plated, very pretty. And then we have one that's just solid but clear and pink in the middle. Let me get you close. I just don't know how well this is translating, but these are all very pretty. They would make just gorgeous little things. Like I said, I have this chain and it'll be on the beading chain page too. And this will make a really pretty chain for these necklaces. All you need is a lobster claw clasp and a couple jump rings. And that's what that looks like. And let's see what else. Oh, I have these leaf pendants and these are really pretty. I have three colors obviously. I have clear, pink, and purple. Let me get you close. And these are just really pretty. These are more of a bright silver tone. So they would look really good on the silver be beading chain too. But all of these, you just pop them on a chain and there you have it. Or you could even string something. And then of course, like I said, these little stars the, with the little rhinestone peeking out of the bottom. These come in a package of four or five, five I believe, and um, those will be on the on the page with the pendants also. So just check it out and see what you can find. Um, get some of these little beading chain ends and some beading chain. You can also use a clamshell, so I can show you how to use a clamshell. I'll make one more um, necklace, maybe I'll pop one of these hearts or something on it, a leaf on it, and show you how to put a clamshell on the end of the beading chain if you want to use that. So one more project and we'll okay. call it good. So I have cut about a 17 inch piece of chain in the bright silver color and I've slid on one of the leaf pendants in the pink stone here. And um, I'm just going to use, show you how to use a clamshell to end this real quick. So. I'm going to teach you both how to use a size 2 and a size 1 crimp tube. So I'm going to get a size 1 crimp tube out and we'll do that one first because it's easiest but it's not quite as secure. You're going to want to have a little bit of glue whether it's super glue, the gel type would be best, or um, Hypo Cement or E6000 or I'm using this one. This is Aline's Jewelry Metal Glue. This works really good too. So what we're going to do is we have these little clamshell tips here. And I'm going to slide my chain through the bottom of the clamshell so that the end of my chain has the opening of the clamshell like this. Then I'm going to just drop it down, get it out of my way, and I'm going to pick up my size 1 beetle on crimp bead inside my chain nose pliers. Then I'm just going to slide my chain through the hole of that crimp bead and then just, sorry, so I just slid my chain through the hole and I'm going to move it up towards the top of my chain leaving a little sticking out and then I'm just going to squeeze that little size 1 down like this. And then I can trim this off a little bit. Then I'm going to grab my clamshell, move it to the top of my chain, 
so that my bead, my little crib bead is sitting right inside the belly of that clamshell. And I'm going to grab my glue, put a dot in here. And then because it has glue in it, I'm just going to close the clamshell with my chain nose pliers right around the crimp bead, just like that. So all I did was squeeze it shut. I think I got out of camera, but I'm going to do this side too. So I will I will show you again. Okay, so now in, we're going to put a clamshell on with a size two crimp tube. So this is a beetle on size two and it is tubular, of course. And first thing you're going to do is pick up your clamshell and from the bottom, put your chain through the hole of the bottom of the clamshell, just like we did before. Just like that. Drop it down. And then this time I'm going to pick up my crimp tube in my crimping tool and the second divot, the one closest to the handle, pick it up and then I'm just going to put my, let me arrange that a little better. Then I'm going to put my chain into that tube, just like that, and have a little bit hanging out and then squeeze. Now I've created the fold in the center of the tube. I'm going to place it sideways in my crimp tool in the first divot, the one closest to the tip of the tool making sure that the two tubes that I created on either side of the fold are touching the crimping tool and then squeeze. Now I have a nice little crimp. However, because it's going in the belly of the clamshell, I'm going to reduce it down a little bit. So I'm just going to put it back into the first divot and I'm just going to move it around, squeeze and reduce it down so it fits nicely in there. Then I will cut my chain down like this. Then I can bring my tube up, drop some glue in. This is more secure. You don't necessarily have to put um, the glue in, but I do anyway, just in case. And drop that in there like that. Take your pliers and just close the clamshell, just like that. Now you can put a jump ring and a clasp on the end of your clamshells. Just grab a jump ring and whatever kind of clasp you have. I don't have one out yet. So you just open a jump ring and slide it on either side like I showed you earlier. And I will do that off camera. I'll come back and show you the pieces we've made and then we'll call it good. And that's what my ending looks like. So this is my necklace. Let me back off a little bit. And it's really a pretty piece. I wanted to also show you, I forgot, with the stars and with the little <clears throat> solitaire charms that I showed you on the necklace and these. And I think um, these are also five to a package. Um, I'll have to count or I'll have to look and make sure. But these are also on my website. These are really pretty little charms too. If you had the stars and the little solitaire one and these and a little piece of chain, a little bit wider open than the small ones, just, you know, a little bit bigger chain. Let me see if I have something. You could just attach jump rings on this and put it on your chain and have a really cute charm bracelet. So I would cut, here's some chain. It has decent size lengths. You could even go bigger. You could, just as long as you're not really tiny and you can get jump rings through this. I would cut the length that you need for your bracelet an inch short of the size that you want. So if I'm making a seven inch, I cut six inches. I put a jump ring on either side with a or a large jump ring on one side and small jump ring and a lobster claw on the other side. Put some jump rings on your charms. You could use the stars, you could use these, and you could use the little solitaire ones that I put on the necklace, and you could make a really cute charm bracelet. Now these stars are kind of one-sided. Oh, that one's missing a stone, that's great. Anyway, um, these are one-sided, so they would make better earrings or um, a pendant, or you could use them on a bracelet too, that would be fine, but 
they're not quite as pretty on one side as they are on the other. These, however, you could really put, you could make a really cute charm bracelet with these. Or you could do the same type of necklace that I did with this. The same type of thing. You just put your jump ring on and put a bead on either side and dangle these. That would be really, really pretty too. So just some quick, easy projects that you can do. Pop a couple hearts on a pair of um, ear wires and you got it. Bunch of pretty little pendants to choose from. Some beading chains, some ends, and you have it. I'll show you all the projects we made and we'll be done. Okay, and here are the things that I popped together in just a couple of minutes. And this one would be prettier on um, a different color chain. Something that's a little less brassy than the beading chain. So, something more like this color perhaps. or Golds are hard to match. But if you have a nice little chain, you can pop that on. That would be great, too. Or it doesn't look terrible on the beading chain. It looks okay. It's just I have this thing about gold. It's kind of weird. Anyway, here is the little earrings we made. And this is the nice little drop little drops that we put on. So all the projects, they're really pretty. Um, they turned out really nice, and you can make really quick Christmas gifts. Pop these in a little box, and you have a really nice gift. Anyway, I just wanted to show you what was new and what you could get if you want to. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.